I've been in this space for over eight years, and prior to starting, I went from being a recruiter by day and a theater actor by night to a full-time performance marketer. I'm Lee, and I'm here because I've built a career as a performance marketer over the past eight years with diverse full funnel experiences within agencies and in-house. And with that has come the good, the bad, and the very ugly in this industry. And today I'm going to discuss my seven top learnings you should focus on. And I'm not going to go through a comprehensive list of all the courses I took or wish I took to learn how to run paid media channels and social media and search. Nope. Those are a plenty, and you're likely already learning with client context mentoring and trial and error via employee. So truthfully, my straightforward advice is to build upon those basic skills and rules so you can break and innovate beyond them with curiosity, creativity, and collaboration because performance marketing is always advancing, whether you're junior or senior, and having the right attitude is truly the way you'll excel throughout your career. So, <clears throat> Here are the seven things I'd learn and advise you to learn and adapt to as early on to save countless hours over analyzing situations figuratively and literally. Let's get into it. Number one, get comfortable analyzing data. Now, this may seem obvious, but you'd be surprised how many performance marketers don't like working with data. And spoiler alert, data analytics is a or the major component of performance marketing, and it is always evolving, especially now with AI and chat GPT, et cetera. And yeah, personally, I would immediately undertake a coding course that teaches data analytics or science and get comfortable just working with that data math and some statistics and this is especially important if you never specialized in those subjects and my degree was creative writing so hey now get a good foundation of skills so you're happy to keep learning and then start applying such learnings to your day-to-day -day. for example using linear regression to establish whether a channel has reached the point of diminishing returns and Sounds hard? Well, maybe, but it is fun when you can prove a hypothesis and it is this that will help you drive real value and get those pay rises and promotions. However, I would emphasize that maybe the most important skill is actually curiosity and creativity in this area. This feeds analysis, testing, optimization, and strategy. Essentially, you have to be curious. You are not a cat. It will not kill you. And if everything is going well, do not get complacent. Continue to ask why results are not better and investigate any potential data points that you haven't before. A good way of doing this is to set personal goals. For example, improving the cost per link click by 10% this quarter. Now that may seem linear or unexciting, but to get there might take a lot of effort, digging and creativity. Two, which brings me to my next point, get comfortable with being wrong. And by that, let's start by understanding that nothing is wrong. The learnings from an A-B test this week could mean nothing, i.e. be wrong next week. You just need to accept that your job is to basically test things. And if you fail, great. That just means you know that the previous strategy was and currently is the best, and you can move your resources to another performance component that might improve yours or your client's ROI. So adapt the mindset that the result of a test, whether you were right or wrong, is always positive. And if you work in an agency, you need to be able to frame this to clients as well, so they also understand that the failures are just as important as the wins. Three, master your communication and collaboration skills. Now, performance marketing is more effective and just more fun if you have great relationships with your concurrent marketing teams in loyalty, CRM, SEO, and CRO, and more. Not only that, but you also need rapport with your product and sales teams if you're an aging consultant or working in-house. Essentially, build these relationships so that people trust what you do and give you the freedom to test and collaborate. I was once told that to break rules, you have to know the rules, and that's where innovation comes from. And that process will be a lot simpler if your colleagues actually support you. And all these roles are connected anyway. You will all learn from each other. And it's amazing how isolated these teams often are, agency and client side. Now, um, read the book Tribal Leadership to understand what I mean. It's a favorite here at Funnel. My most essential example is that data-driven marketing and creative should work hand in hand. Obvious, right? But both teams are often protective of their value. Creatives and performance marketers need each other more than they think. 
Performance marketers create the structure, the easel and canvas for a creative concept to succeed upon. And performance marketers also need to accept that good creative truly proves their insights and optimizations were correct. Better yet, disagreements are actually a good thing. Opposing thoughts are simply a test plan. For example, creatives think that a video should be 15 seconds long and you five seconds because that's best practice. Instead of fretting, just see this as a positive. You've just got a new thing to test and one that will likely prevent strategic bottlenecks and wasted time in the future. Simply put, learning how to explain and collaborate upon digital strategies, channels and formats will help your insights and colleagues' creativity flourish and drive objective growth for your clients, as well as making the job more fun. Four. Don't be afraid to challenge your colleagues, managers, and bosses. Now, others may not, and I understand why people hold back here, but from my experience, I've learned that you should always stand your ground as long as you're professional, democratic, and willing to learn, obviously. You were hired for your expertise and opinion, even if you're still junior. And if you speak your mind positively and enthusiastically with the logic your data skills allow, then they'll listen and you'll get your point across. A good manager, will of course appreciate this. And it's great practice for you to develop your interpersonal skills and stakeholder management. Most importantly, if your manager is self-aware, they'll have no problem acknowledging that they've probably not been in the trenches of granular data analysis for a while, as their job has progressed beyond that. So by being confident in your thoughts, they will learn from you, allowing you to learn from them. Strong relationships will form and you'll also hopefully feel confident in saying no sometimes. It's a big one, this one. Learn to say no. And by that, I mean, don't be a yes man. Innovators and leaders don't develop by saying yes all the time. And you're not a good manager if you expect it. Getting to grips of attribution. This is a doozy. Now, usually the end goal is for someone to buy your product, but how did they get there? Understanding every touch point, your customer's journey and how they ended up purchasing will make you a more better, more productive marketer. Eh, that's the idealistic statement anyway, and Google Analytics, etc., will insinuate it's easy, but they're wrong, okay? Attribution is easily the most complicated aspect of performance marketing. It always was, but in my opinion, marketers and companies and bosses and investors were always scared to convey it due to complexity. And then came mobile, ad blockers, GDPR, IDP, first party and third party data, cookies, iOS 14.5, changing the game again by limiting cross device tracking, not to mention the effect of post view impressions, ATL channels, and long term brand effect. It's a long sentence, it's a lot. <clears throat> Simply put, a paid channel like Google or Meta or any attribution product will tell a different story because data and consumer journeys are now so fractured. There is no objective solution here. I don't care what anyone says. And so understanding each channel and model's pitfalls and the evolving theories around full funnel marketing will help you explain it better to those around you. This will prevent strategic limitations as you're not pivoting around biased data and help you find a path towards more objective tests that prove your efforts real value and drive actual incremental profit. For example, planning geotests or MMM studies uh, with an internal team or via an open source tool like Meta's Robin. With attribution, proxies for truth as a means for perpetual testing are there to learn, but you have to structure your strategies to accommodate and sell it. As a suggestion, I would read more from authors such as Les Benet and Tom Roach. Learn about full funnel planning and incrementality. The more you learn, the better you'll be able to explain it internally and externally to clients or partners. These issues are often isolated to performance marketers, limiting company innovation, and the ability to educate these complex subjective topics will help you avoid strategic limitations and sell more interesting projects. Six, mistakes will happen and don't beat yourself up about it. My best example, not me by the way, but once while working in London, I heard of an agency accidentally spending £250,000 on ads for tampons over a single weekend but they targeted men. Now, whether or not it was someone with a lot of experience or not, it's a great reminder that sometimes, for whatever reason, it happens. Now, I hope you never experienced such tampon stresses, but I emphasize this because one day you might be a manager, and I've had some apathetic ones, and so it's vitally important that you remember to be kind and supportive to junior workers when you're managing them, or simply in a more senior position than them. 
You'll witness their mistakes and successes early on in their career, and it's part of your job to protect and support their continued development, making sure they're in a safe environment to flourish, just like you did. Seven. Now, despite all I've said, and it may be difficult to accept this one, but you have to be realistic. For example, strategic tasks you know are right may take time due to internal or client politics, or they might just be impossible to implement due to small retainer times or a lack of digital maturity within your clients. And this can happen. I've missed out on implementing a lot of ideas I thought were innovative, but it's not worth stressing about factors out of your control. So either accept some projects or insights may take time to realize or just move on and stay confident that you'll do your best within the given circumstances. To wrap it up, if you're a curious and creative person who likes data and to challenge industry norms, then you're a good place to start. Some think it requires a computer science degree or something similar, and while that does help, I've been in this space for over eight years, and prior to starting, I went from being a recruiter by day and a theater actor by night to a full-time performance marketer. Most people I've met in the space have all sorts of backgrounds and skill sets and have all created successful careers for themselves. So if your background is holding you back or you think it is, I hope this encourages you to take the next step and bring these seven tips along with you. 